everybody. Welcome to Obscure Animation. We're real excited. This is the podcast where once a month we talk about an independent, obscure, underrated, underseen, however we fit to, to, to describe it that <laughs> month, uh, animated film. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Stanford is here. Hey, hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. It's 2020, but I'm doing pretty uh, good. 2020. <laughs> is the pits but yeah we carry on it's been wild uh and uh, yeah it's it's been an interesting last couple of months i'm really excited i got to see uh wolf walkers we we had done uh we had done tom moore films last year so i'm really excited to eventually talk That's about right. that you got to see yeah. that. that was through the Toronto yes, through International the Toronto. Film Festival, right? Mm-hmm. And that's right. That's so, so cool. I got to see that, and it is outstanding. You are oh, going good. to love it. It is I so can't wait. good. I'm uh, you know, planning to watch it on, on Apple TV Plus when it, when it shows up here. I think it's supposed to show up in October, isn't it? I'm trying to remember what the date is for, yeah, we'll for have Apple. To- We'll have to do, and I'm working on trying to get another interview with Tom Moore. Uh, so, oh, excellent. But I I absolutely loved it. And oh, I'm so glad I yeah. you liked it. That's terrific. Yeah. And so everybody should look out for that. And so there's been some fun little uh, gems that have come out uh, this year. It's been a hard year. But Oof. <laughs> but, brutal year and a brutal year for this film we're going to talk about too yes. you know i'm excited to talk a little bit about its history yeah so what uh is interesting about this film is so when i first saw it i thought that it was a new movie uh i saw it in the new york film uh festival particularly the lincoln center screening virtual screening room yeah they're they're online virtual cinema that they mm-hmm. that they're doing now yeah yeah and i i thought that it was a new movie and so i suggested to you that we should watch it and it's called son of the white mare and it turns out it's actually a restoration yeah it's a new restoration so this it came out in 1981 originally i read right is that what you yeah saw too and yeah and this restoration they were planning on doing it it's never played in north america before that i was what i read Mm -hmm. and uh i guess it's been on there have been bootleg copies of it floating around but there hasn't been a kind of an official release and so they did this 4k restoration uh it's the it was a it was with the hungarian film archive and a, a firm out of Los Angeles called Arbelos Films, which I've never heard uh-huh. of before until this. But they, uh, yeah, so they had this big plan for all these, you know, they were going to put it in film festivals and it was going to be a big, big rollout. And I think it was scheduled in March <laughs> of 2020. Uh... So, so uh, COVID, COVID killed it. But uh, good for, I thought good for film at Lincoln Center for putting it on their website and hopefully some other people do too because it was just for a short period of time yeah but i was so grateful that you saw it you know and, and, and suggested it because otherwise i'm hoping that people are going to have more opportunity and i wouldn't be surprised if it, if it gets a blu-ray release at some it point it screams too. of something that will be know, on right? criterion i know Don't right you exactly oh absolutely yeah. yeah so and so that is a bummer they because there was already a risk you know, to yeah. put money, invest in something that's as different as as this film. Yeah. So that's bu- that's a bummer that they weren't able to release it. That <laughs> it they, really is dis- uh, disappointing. That's but too bad. Hopefully, again, this you know, it's it's going to have a life uh, online, and, and again, hopefully yeah. with a with a Blu-ray release. Well, and not that we have tons and tons of listeners, but hopefully, the people that do listen can be inspired to check it out and yeah uh we can give it some attention here exactly Uh, Exactly. this is a very unique film it's called yeah i said son of the white mare and uh as you said it was originally released in 1981 and this is by uh 
the animator Marcel Jankovic. And I, there's going to be a lot of Hungarian names. And so I apologize <laughs> in advance. I, I apologize too. <laughs> I'm just going to butcher them. I don't mean to. I'm sorry. <laughs> and so, yeah, this is a very, very unique film. And it's interesting because I feel like this movie is at times extremely, extremely surreal. It's extremely different. Uh, it's one that uh, I wouldn't recommend to everybody. But on the other hand, it's also fairly simple and yeah. based on just classic uh, myth, mythology and classic storytelling. So mm -hmm. uh, it kind of has both. Yeah, I thought so too. It was kind of this combination of of fanciful and beautiful and then psychedelic and then grotesque, you know, kind of all like wrapped in, wrapped into one. Um, also, and you know, it was in Hungarian with English subtitles too, which I didn't detract from it at all, but just, you know, just to be aware of that's, that's how this release is. Uh, yeah. And it's, uh, you've got that 4K and the colors and... Oh, those colors, uh, which it, I know we'll get into, but holy smokes. Yeah, it was... That was worth the price of admission yes, for me. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, as much as I I would, would love to see it on the big screen, in some ways I think something like this is almost better. I at home when you can take a little bit of breaks from mm -hmm. it's so overwhelming mm -hmm. uh, the experience of this kind of surrealism that I, I feel like I almost need a breather sometimes when I'm watching. Yeah, I was actually I was seeing the same thing. I was like it was a combination of wow, I'd love to see this on the big screen, and then also oh, I'm so happy I'm watching this at home. Yeah, <laughs> 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 because you remember when we went to see uh, when we went to see. Um, uh, the the Beatles one, Yellow, Yellow Submarine. Submarine. Well, we went to see Yellow Submarine, and it, it was just kind. Of, it was kind of overwhelming, and yeah. it it has a lot of similarities, I think, to this. Except for that, obviously, has some live action worked elements worked into it. But in the the way that uh, there's sort of there's not like a ton of structure and the style of sort of of the animation is somewhat similar. Yeah, I totally agree. I, it, it reminded me very much of, of a yellow submarine type of, type of experience. Some of the stuff I read, you know, after I watched it, after I was just, you know, doing some research for the podcast and also just learning more. Um, and you kindly sent me some stuff too. So thank you as always <laughs> for that. But um, some people were comparing it to, to Fantasia mm -hmm. as well, which I thought was interesting. And, and in some ways, Kind of true, you know, yeah. just depending on the, the 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 piece, but but it seems very experimental and yeah, that's a good uh, word for it. And um, again, again, kind of a psychedelic experience. I just wonder. Same with like Yellow Submarine. I think it's just a place for people, mm -hmm. you know, get high and go watch the movie. <laughs> and and uh, that might be you know, that might be the only time where it's really fun in the movie theater. If you know if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah, a, a couple others that I thought of, uh, Fantastic Planet is yeah. very similar, and it was made right around the same time, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then also Allegro Non Troppo, and have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have. Uh, and that's basically a, a European version of Fantasia. Yep. And I actually did it for Obscure Animation before... It was a podcast format when it was just when I first started. I did a Allegro non trapo. Oh, interesting! And, yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty uh, it's fun, uh, and it's a little bit more silly than this. Uh huh. This has more gravitas. Yeah, but... this has more gravitas. There's just more mythology, right? It's just is more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I don't know. It's 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 an interesting. Uh, it's an interesting. Uh, experiment that they did and uh, I couldn't f I wish I could have found more about this uh, Marcel J J yeah Jankovic. there wasn't a ton there's not a ton about on him, him. I and mean, it's basically just his filmography I would be really interested uh, to know more about him and his background and if anybody listening if you know please fill us in uh, we'd love to know uh, but um, 
you know, the one thing, and I, and I kick, I'm kicking myself for this racial because I didn't notice it on the screen, but with that, with that rental from, from the virtual cinema at Lincoln center, uh-huh. they were also playing a short called the struggle. Did you watch the short? I didn't. I didn't either. Ah, and, uh, but um, it, it's, it won the Palme d'Or, uh, I guess at the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, it was made in 1977, and it's just a two-minute short. But it's it's about a a sculpture that's 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 picking at at the sculptor, you know. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so it's like kind of this battle between the two. And it sounds like that would be very yeah. interesting. And also just to see what hit, something else if he followed that same kind of animation style, you know, if that's just with 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 the colors and and whatnot, is you know, we'll get into, but. Yeah, but, not, but I was really so okay. I I didn't watch it either, and I'm bummed. I have to, sorry, the, I may have to look on YouTube. The article that one of the articles I found, I uh, did say that I guess he had a uh, a struggle with the communist uh, yeah. party that was in charge there in Hungary, and at the time, and that they would make him change, and. Uh, remove certain parts and different things like that from uh from his films Mm -hmm. and uh that he wasn't he says that he wasn't a political director but it says though jankovics is a mostly apolitical figure whose run-ins with political censorship didn't seem to inspire much resentment or rage his work nevertheless has potential for a subtle kind of radicalism yes yeah, and so that's interesting. Uh, that was interesting too, and and not that I can necessarily pull out all the of those themes, but I, but I kind of felt it. Mm-hmm. If that if that makes yeah. sense, you know that that I thought this seems radical enough that I wonder if he's trying to make a point about you know government or politics or some other bigger thing you know that was going on in in Mm -hmm. hungary at the time at the very least there's definitely a feeling in this movie of sort of the small common person that can rise up and defeat the dragons defeat the bad they're imprisoning the the women and the princesses and so there's at least that kind of uh and i'm not sure who or what would be the 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 mayor um that yeah the nurses the the she the, she the births all three of the men right in the film yeah. and, and particularly uh tree shaker who's our main tree shaker yeah main character mm-hmm. but yeah I, i've wondered i've wondered the same thing too is it representative of like mother hungary <laughs> you know yeah. i mean instead of, of the country itself or or some other yeah, yeah it'd be interesting to know i i wish mm-hmm. that we 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 could know but uh it kind of made me um think of the tree shaker it made me think of you know my favorite book is the is the book thief and uh in in that uh in that book they have the word shaker right. and uh and have you read it have you read no, it no but i've seen the film adaptation oh. which isn't necessarily i don't know i know it's yeah it is what it is right but uh <laughs> well it just made me think i wonder if he was at all i mean who knows but but it just made me think of the because in it's the word the word shaker is the uh is the drawing that uh, max makes the story he makes for liesel and uh, about the word shaker mm-hmm. who is going to challenge the dictator and uh and uh i i mean the movie is is, is good i liked the movie it's just the book is unfilmable. Well, the book is so unfilmable. much yeah well i just so much better right yeah. I mean, as far as just yeah it's one of the, the most original uh things i've ever experienced in my life i it, it is just i absolutely love that book so much people should read it uh and the book uh, the audiobook is great as well uh, of course, you don't get the illustrations for the for the word shaker, but anyway, it just made me think of it as this the mm-hmm. the same that you yeah. have in there. This whole idea of the word shaker is basically going to confront Hitler, and with with the words, and uh, and that's how you kind of get back to 
Uh, and there's nothing that's like, it's like the article said, nothing as overtly political as the word shaker, but, uh, but just the idea of this, this, uh, small boy having growing up and and having the strength to defeat the dragons i think Mm -hmm. there's there's something in there yes the tree shaker and so yeah so overall i mean i guess i should say did you enjoy watching the film oh i loved it yeah i was absolutely transfixed the whole time Mm -hmm. uh you know it's the the pacing's kind of unusual i guess Mm -hmm. i should say in that Sometimes it seemed like it was very slow, and other times I wanted it to slow down. You know, just because yeah. uh, visually there was so much, there was so much going on. But honestly, just was like watching uh, a beautiful painting for an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. You know, or a beautiful painting in that it's also though very, very modern. You know, I thought I guess the, the art itself was. I mean, sure, it's one of those things that the art is probably incredibly complicated, but it looks simple. And I don't mean that as a criticism. I just mean it as just, you know, it's, it almost in a, in a, in a weird way, and this is maybe isn't even fair, Rachel, but it kind of remind me of, of some of the UPA stuff we looked at in that very monochromatic as far as, you know, like the, the backgrounds. And, yeah, that's true. And, and the way that the characters are placed on the screen and they the characters uh, don't have tons of colors and details necessarily on them. Mm-hmm drawn on them but it uh, almost reminded me of uh prince Ahmed. yes yeah absolutely yeah yeah in the silhouettes uh, yeah well said yeah and it, yeah it had it almost had that kind of feel of you know something that lottie redinger or you know the early silent films because there is some dialogue in here but it's mostly kind of more chanting yeah it's not like dialogue <laughs> right <laughs> and i mean the plot doesn't really matter i was kind of thinking what are we going to talk about in the podcast but because <laughs> it's it's really more about the images and the experience it's that you're this, having it's this experience yeah. yeah it's it's basically about these this uh this horse goddess that has three that there's three powerful sons, I guess. That yeah, and that she, she she births. Yeah, <laughs> right. and they go to fight the dragons and save the prince. Three there's three yeah princesses. three princesses get kidnapped mm-hmm. by three different dragons, right? And they're taken into yeah. some kind of underground world, right? Which you could call that. I mean, it's not so much that it's the underground. I don't think maybe it yeah. is, but it's this and, other. Uh, and really, I mean, the story doesn't even get started at all until about the tw- about the fifteen minute mark, yeah. uh, where the the opening fifteen minutes is all just the birth of these children. Yeah, and, yeah, and kind of the raising, you know, mm-hmm. by the by this by this white mare. And mm-hmm. yeah, well, I mean, if you had to say, what do you think that he, he might be saying about the white mare? Oh, you know, I've been trying <laughs> to make. <laughs> no, I mean, it, 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 hey. the article it said that uh, he said he is unconcerned with sentimentality or moral order. Yeah, and events in his films rarely seem to be determined by any will or agency beyond that of the universe itself. He said, he says Jankovic himself has claimed that my human characters, even lead characters are only a minor part of the whole image. Yeah. And that I'm so glad you r- brought that up because honestly I've been just been racking my my <laughs> mind. It almost just seems like it's uh I, I wonder too since I'm not familiar with the source material because it's pulled from mm-hmm. from a few f- sources it sounds like. There's one particular book but also some other just other you know mythological and different elements that got got pulled in and so uh, since i'm not familiar with the source material i just it just it almost just seemed like the white mare was some kind of deity to me oh yeah but but um but yeah well, it, why she it, only bore these sons and whatever was going on with the sons uh, you know i don't know <laughs> I, I don't know i think i think it might be 
like it's it's obviously about creation we know that mm -hmm. and uh and so whether that's about like the big bang or whether it's about god creating man or uh whether it's just about creation itself we don't we don't know i mean that's up for interpretation however it inspires you but that's that's what watching this kind of thing is all about yes it's about uh being inspired by art and it you know when uh i don't know it's i feel like that, that this kind of thing works better when it's a shorter film like this is yes um uh, and it, that sometimes it can be frustrating when like for instance watching i'm uh, thinking of uh any things uh which is the new latest charlie kaufman film yeah and that was frustrating to me because it felt like it it wanted to have it both ways and have parts of that were plot and have plot parts that were super artistic and expressionistic and surreal and it that it kind of, and then there were parts that it was kind of like that's not making any sense like why the this is this is more artistically consistent throughout from the start to the end of the experience that you're having it's not just randomness mm -hmm. which i guess randomness can be art but as a as a viewer i i i want it's not a pleasant experience for me to experience randomness and maybe that's yeah. what what kaufman wanted. that's a whole nother podcast but maybe he didn't want it to be a pleasant experience i don't know yeah. but uh but i don't know if that makes sense that that you you participate it's kind of similar like a tree of life works for me very yeah. well with terrence malick yes. and that because that is consistent this it's, it's got the same message it's got the same style it's yeah. got the same thing throughout it's this artistic experience you go and you experience it it's not just randomness there's there's a thought right. behind it there's a artistry behind it and uh whereas like sometimes it can almost feel like one of my most hated movies of all time is film socialism by jean-luc godard where it truly feels like randomness yeah it's like he just i mean even the subtitles are in what he called pigeon navajo which is like super insulting i mean the whole thing is just the worst and 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 so you know he was like i don't know what he was trying to say but it was awful i hate it and in in this this is a consistent piece of art that you watch yeah i i thought so too i honestly it just it it harkened back to to studying mythology in school yeah me. i just felt like okay i'm we're seeing a, a myth or even a combination of myths that i'm not familiar with but the archetypes were there, you know, yeah. there was definitely a really clear hero's journey going on. Uh, it, um, the stuff going on with the white mare, it actually kind of reminded me like of the whole Romulus and Remus thing of the founding of Rome, <laughs> you know, uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and then of course saving the princesses and, you know the dragons and all this all, all this sort of stuff and so I, I enjoyed the story but i just kept picking out different elements that i thought oh yeah this reminds me of, of you know <laughs> uh, this or that but it was it was interesting to see it in it, it, it pulled from from a different perspective you know mm -hmm. clearly from from this hungarian uh point of view yeah yeah i agree and uh the 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 sort of the powers of the the I, I loved the way that they animated the it was all it kind of reminded me a little bit of hercules yes in the way that the one son is animated with his powers because yeah. of of uh the because of his mother's sacrifice that she did uh and uh, i don't even the way that he looked obviously this was way before that but I wouldn't be surprised if there was of the many, many crazy things that influenced Hercules. <laughs> this might have been yeah. one of them. I don't I know. Thought of, I thought of Hercules too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking that either, you know, Ron and John or, or, or Gerald Scarf, you know, who was yes. there, uh, if, if they had seen this film <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, 
yeah, we're, we're pulling some elements from it. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. And I, uh, what did you think of the music in the movie? Well, you know, um, I, I th- thought it was, uh, experimental, but, but I liked it. It didn't, it didn't, mm-hmm. it didn't detract f- f- at all f- for me. You know, I keep, my new benchmark now is Tenant, which I thought had the worst soundtrack. I mean, that gave, that gave me such a headache and it really pulled me out of the movie, frankly, because I was like, and maybe it hurt the, you know. The, which one? Uh, Tenant. Oh, yeah. Because it was in the IMAX Agreed. too and it was so loud and, um, which I typically like, but, but, uh, but this didn't pull me out of the film at all. What did you think about it? I really liked it. I mean, it reminded me a lot of the. Oh, uh, it reminded me a lot of the Daft Punk Interstellar. Yes. Yes. That we did uh, on Obscure Animation. It also reminded me of Blade Runner. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. There and uh, it. Uh, yeah, it had a very like soothing effect to it, and it really drew you into the animation. Yeah, it really worked, and. I heard Rachel. I read that this this composer. And I've got to find his his name, but he um, he was involved with this 4K restoration. He's still alive. Oh yeah, it's and, yeah. Uh, Istvan Vajda. Okay, yeah, he's he was he was part of the team that that was because the you know to help restore the soundtrack. Um, so that that was cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And this anybody? I actually ended up watching it on Vimeo. Uh, and so that's where I oh uh, cool so I it's still it. on Vimeo oh good 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 yeah I rented yeah. it from Film and Lincoln Center and it's not available anymore yeah so people so. can still still watch it yeah and... I was hoping that it would be you know find a home somewhere you know that that yeah that's good yeah and I I think that people that like uh i i think you can see that whether it's the exact influence of this movie uh i whether they were you know these people may not have ever even heard of this we don't know but but still like just the way things evolve and change you can see sort of influences on one thing on it or another even if it's not overt um but definitely in something like uh gendy tartakovsky uh, yeah i feel like you could see sort of influences of that definitely in, in tree shaker and the uh just the style the boxy style that he the gendy does for things like samurai jack and primal I yeah you can see it there um i also definitely can see themes in don hertzfeld uh-huh. for sure uh his is obviously simpler as far as the animation but just in the way uh the sort of the pacing and the the way that his his stories um they they seem like just sort of cute stories but when you dive in there's more there Mm -hmm. you know it seems like it seems like these simplistic uh pencil drawings and yet there's these like deep themes there and i feel like it's kind of the same here I do too. Yeah, I was I was wishing I knew more about the, both the source material as well as Hungarian uh, art, culture, and politics. You know, <laughs> so I can interpret this film better. Because uh, I I absolutely loved the the visuals, and I was so uh, taken by them. But uh-huh. I honestly felt like I just didn't have enough context to completely comprehend what was happening other than just just the enjoyment of looking at a really interesting work of art yeah the the indie wire review it says i like it says he says you know where the story is going but never how it will look as the movie mm-hmm. blends an yeah. ancient and lyrical aesthetic with abrupt quasi techno flourishes it says there's a seven colored gnome who goes from foil to sidekick and practically talks in auto tune a rhythmic forging of swords between the three elemental brothers feels like a daft punk music video that lost its way and <laughs> tree crushers battles with the three-headed stone giant with huge testicles and weaponry that includes a fiery orange <laughs> there's a dark comic quality to each duel 
with Jankovic's anticipating video game routine by at least 10 years. Which I thought is interesting. Yeah, interesting. You know, that's a really great description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, I like that, the, the seven-colored gnome. I thought yes. that was a nice part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, I also liked the, the whole thing with the princesses, I, I thought was interesting with the, you know, the battle to get the princesses. I thought it was too. And each princess was very different in personality as well as in animation style mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Which I thought was, which I thought was quite, quite interesting. And the the other article they said they described as to watch a Jano, Jano, uh, to watch a Jankovic film can often be a disorienting experience experience not unlike listening to a story relayed by a particularly imaginative child and that's where I see the connection between Don Hertzfeld like his yeah. his stories are told from the perspective of a child and yet and they even have literally the uh, the kind of the random vocals of a child but they're put together in a way that makes you think and it all adds to the whole experience and yeah. so yeah it's it's very it was, interesting is this review too Rachel that, you, that you're reading is it the one that also has that quote from from a, a child I guess Yankovic said one of the greatest compliments he ever had was uh, a, a little boy came up to me after watching Son of the White Man and said you you made a movie of my dream you yeah. know, like bring you brought a dream to life. You know, just mm-hmm. the way, just and and it felt that way a yeah. lot. I thought a lot that yeah. it was, it was very dreamlike and surreal, but never like kind of nightmare. Even though I did go into some, you know, pretty psychedelic, mm-hmm. you know, some grotesque stuff, but mostly it was just, yeah. it was just so um, kaleidoscopic. I thought just so colorful yeah. and and. Uh, um, just so 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 impressive i was really impressed by it yeah the colors the movement it's very kaleidoscopic as you said and uh, so yeah i'd be very curious to know if i uh, if if people listening have seen it yes and what and they've heard they, about uh, it and yeah what they thought i we did get i did get one comment uh that i asked on my twitter if anybody had seen this uh, on Twitter, I uh, says, this is Connor Johnson. He says, Marcel Jankovic is quite possibly the greatest animator in all of Hungary. He understands artistic integrity like almost no other. And I asked him what he meant by that to elaborate. And he says, what I mean is he really goes out of his way to produce high art and make sure that every ounce of effort shows in every single aspect. He says it took him 23 years to produce the tragedy of man. And that's his most recent film. <laughs> um, and, and uh, so I think that that's pretty incredible. And uh, that the, the amount of work and the amount of, this is a true piece of art. And you can't say that about most movies, but this is one, I think. I agree. Yeah. And so very good. Well, let us know if you're listening, what you think of this movie if you check it out uh if you're intrigued maybe maybe our discussion i would love to to know that that would be really cool and we'll put, i'll put the link to the vimeo if people want to watch it and rent it you should check it out yes and definitely so thank you so much for joining me to talk about this i really appreciate it oh thank you Rachel. Yeah, thanks fun. for thanks for introducing me to yet another really cool <laughs> It's your animation film. You're welcome. It's so fun to talk about these. So where can people follow you and your content? Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Stanford Clark. And then I have a movie podcast and blog at moviespastandpresent.com. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So please check that out. And uh, check out the Homeworkies podcast. We've got a lot of fun stuff going on there. A lot of fun stuff happening. So I would really appreciate that. And uh, thanks so much. And we'll talk to you all next month. Bye, everyone.